Hi, I'm Dave Silver, environmental educator with the James River Association. Today, we'll learn about our drinking water. Water is everywhere. 70% of the Earth's surface is covered in it. But of all the water in the world, only one hundredth of one percent is usable by humans. And even less than that is found in our rivers. If this five gallon bucket contained all the Earth's water, then the water in our rivers would be represented by less than this tiny drop. So clean, fresh water in rivers is the most precious natural resource we have. We can't live without it, and we rely on nature to provide it for us. Water evaporates from oceans and lakes and through plants in a process called transpiration. All this evaporated water moves into our watershed in the atmosphere, falls as rain or snow, and begins moving downhill back towards the ocean. Healthy, protected watersheds with lots of plants and forests and wetlands keep water clean and recharge the underground aquifers of groundwater so that we can get our drinking water from rivers, lakes, and wells. While natural systems help keep it clean, water is very easy to pollute. Water is polluted by chemicals like fertilizers, pesticides, and cleaning supplies, by human waste and manure, by soil erosion, by toxic waste from factories, by petroleum products, and by air pollution. Once water is polluted, it is difficult for us to clean. Many of us living near the James River in Virginia get some or all of our drinking water from the river itself. For example, the city of Richmond uses up to 75 million gallons of the James River each day. Other communities draw their water from reservoirs on smaller tributaries of the James, and many Virginians in rural areas have wells that draw on groundwater. All these sources rely at least partially on the natural cleansing cycles of nature. If you don't know where your water comes from, find out. It takes a lot of energy to purify and deliver water to our homes. About 4% of all electricity generated in the U.S. is used for this purpose. Letting your faucet run for five minutes consumes as much energy as letting a 60-watt light bulb run for 14 hours. This is because water delivered to your faucet must be treated and pumped all the way to your house before you can enjoy it. It makes sense not to waste a drop. In the long run, the water we use gets used again by someone else. Sewage treatment plants receive all the water that leaves your home and carefully treat it before sending it back to the river. This means many carefully engineered steps of treatment by settling ponds, chemicals, aeration, and sunlight before it is released. So, water connects us to our neighbors. Here on the James River, the water I drink in Richmond may have bathed a baby upriver in Lynchburg, and it may still be used again by my friend washing dishes downriver in Hampton Roads, not to mention all the fish and wildlife, farms, and factories that might need it to use it along the way. The river links us all to life and to each other. To learn more about the health of the James River and how you can help out, check out other episodes of the James River University on our website, jraba.org.